and there's a notification. Yep, I just got it too. Billy, how do I pronounce your last name? Klein Spen. Klein and then spend like spend your money. Klein Spen. Yep. All right, I'm going to say that once and then I'll just call you Billy K. Sounds good. <laughs> right. Believe me, it took my high school when I graduated. It took them three days of graduation practice for them to finally pronounce my last name correctly. So <laughs> I'm, I'm used to it by now. You're right. <laughs> Are you looking for comprehensive solutions for your performance and automotive needs? Straight Line Performance and Automotive is a full-service auto repair shop specializing in race car fabrication, electrical design, chassis setup, and alignment. Located in Hamden, Connecticut, they also specialize in aftermarket high-performance and chassis upgrades. Be sure to look them up on Facebook at www.facebook.com backslash straightline, S-T-R number eight, L-I-N-E, performance, Ambersand Automotive, or give them a call at 203-415-5316. Welcome racers and fans to your weekly dose of all things Sportsman Drag Racing. This is Racers News Network Live, presented to you by Straight Line Performance and Automotive. Your hosts, Chris and Pete, bring you the latest news and interviews in the world of Sportsman Drag Racing, including bracket racing, association races, outlaw, and no time events. They are live every Monday night, right here at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take it away, boys. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Racers News Network. Uh, we are fortunate enough to have Taylor Nobile and Billy Kleinspen. Did I get it? Yep. Yes, you did, yeah. Pete. Who's going to be known as Billy K for the rest of the night because I get it right once and that's it. Um, we have our guest joining us to elaborate on 30 for 30. Uh, we have two nominees here, and uh, they are going to explain to us what the program is about, how they're involved in it, and uh, what happens from here. So, guys, take it away. Billy, do you want to start? Sure. Basically, uh, 30 under 30 I reckon, is done by Drag Il Illustrated by Wes Buck and his staff. Basically, it recognizes 30 young people in the drag racing industry, from racers, tuners, race officials, and it's really a good idea to promote the young racers and young talent in our sport. And it's quite an honor to be inducted into this group. Uh, this year is the sixth uh, year that it's been done. And it's an honor to be a part of it this year. So they also, what they do is they have you start in by putting in your votes, your nominations. And okay. then they take all of those nominations. I forget how many they said when I went to PRI. I think it was 7,000. 7,000, yeah. 7,000 nominations. And then they take those and go through them and they look at your social media, how you represent yourself, how you represent your brand, whatever you're supporting. And then they pick from there 30 people. So out of 7,000, it's kind of a big deal to be a part of that little group of 30. Sure. And then at PRI, they bring you all together and you have like a little ceremony, I guess you could say, and they give you a really cool jacket. That is very cool. Now, so if you get nominated, so let's say, Billy, I nominate you, okay, um, for them to pick you, is it like a vote of who has the most nominees, or they just get all the nominees and then they decide? Basically, what they do, um, it's been sorts of controversy about people saying that it's not a popularity contest. It is absolutely not that. What they do is they get all the nominees and then they all get together. The staff at Drag Illustrated, they all get together and then they all go through the nominations. They also look to see what you do behind the scenes and then they just go from there. That, that's and, very cool because the way you described it, 
it absolutely makes makes it not a popularity contest. So you throw your name or someone throws your name in a hat and then they check out you and they decide if you're worthy of the title uh, versus having a lot of friends that just say, hey, vote for me. Uh, that's that's speaks volumes for what you guys do for the sport. That's pretty incredible. Exactly. And another thing they were saying, like you could have the best bracket racer, the best division one racer in the country, but if you're not representing yourself, well, they're not choosing you because you're not really making a good name for the young incoming members of the sport, which I think that speaks the most volume because racing isn't just about turning on the wind light at the end of the day. It's about the way you are as a person, how you, how you lose is the biggest part of racing. Are you going to be the punk that can't handle a loss and cries about it to their mom? Or are you going to be the type of person that says, okay, I can learn from this and get better. Right, right. Absolutely. And one of the things I like about having you two on the show at the same time is it shows that you could be at opposite ends of the spectrum in the sport and still qualify for this, which I think is very cool. Um, obviously, anyone that races Super Street Division One or Super Comp for that matter uh, knows who you are. Anyone who's ever visited Maple Grove knows who Billy is. Um, it, it's just really cool that you have one person uh, keeping us safe and keeping things going at the track and one person is a fierce competitor and you both get nominated for the same award. Uh, that, that's pretty cool. It really shows the diversity of what it's all about. When I saw Billy's name on the sheet, I thought no better person to be a part of this group. I mean, you go to Maple Grove and the shining, smiling face at the ticket booth, the front of the lanes, announcing now from time to time is Billy. And I think he does an amazing job for Maple Grove and one of the reasons why I like going there. Well, I, I got to tell you, even if you didn't say that, just him getting nominated for it uh, just speaks volumes about what he does. So that's, that's very cool. Now, Taylor, am I right in saying that Maple Grove is your home track? Echo Dragway is my home track okay. because I only live two, three minutes away from there. But Maple Grove is my family's home track. My mom and my Aunt Barb used to hand out time slips there as kids with Mike Lewis, his daughter. Um, my grandfather's raced there for uh, more years than I was born, been alive. So <laughs> that's our family home track. But Echo Dragway is my home track. So that, that to me, the reason why I ask is because like you stated earlier, 7,000 nominees and you guys get picked for a very elite group of 30 people and you're both kind of from the same track. Uh, you know, Taylor, you consider it your family's track, Billy, obviously we know it's the track that you work at and has anyone else, did anyone else qualify this year in division one that you know? Of? No, I don't know. So, I mean, think of the odds of that, right? 7,000 nominees, 30 people get it, only two people from Division One, and one works his butt off at Maple Grove, and the other one pretty much grew up at Maple Grove. So that's, that's pretty cool. I like it. So, Billy, uh, seeing as how you're the face of Maple Grove, uh, tell us what's going to happen there this year. Well, I'm looking forward to returning for my 11th season at the track. Uh, I can't believe it's been 11 years already. Uh, time flies when you're having fun, I guess. And um, looking forward to getting back there. I'll be doing announcing from time to time. Um, I'll be helping wherever they need me. And I'm just looking forward to getting back to my family down at the track. Excellent. Good stuff. And for those of you that are watching, this is how you get promoted from host to co-host. Chris. Welcome to the show. Welcome to your show. <laughs> good evening, guys. How are you? Good. How are you, Chris? Good, good. good. Sorry, you? I, I, I had to run down to Cambridge, Massachusetts for, for uh, work. So I uh, took a little, I left a little later than I anticipated. But uh, it happens. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know kind of where you left off, picked up, whatever, but. I so mean, just to give you a quick recap, uh, I had them both explain uh, 30 under 30, how it works, uh, how you get nominated. Um, I recognize that uh, they're both pretty much from Maple Grove. 
Uh, Taylor's family considers Maple Grove her home track. Uh, Billy, as we know, works at the home track. Um, commented about how they're kind of at opposite ends of the same sport, uh, one competing, one working, but yet they both get recognized for an award, which I thought was very cool. Uh, and I just asked Billy what was happening in Maple Grove for 2022. Awesome. Well, first off, congratulations to both of you for, for being nominated. Um, you know, like, like Pete said, to have two people in the same division that are basically from the same track, but on opposite ends of the spectrum, I, I think is pretty cool. And it speaks, you know, volumes about the quality of people in division one. Yeah, without a doubt. That's uh, it, it's impressive. And I mean, I just missed the, the 30 under 30 by like a year or two. So I was so close. <laughs> just a little bit. So Taylor, what's uh, what's happening with your racing program this year? We might so, need a whole show just for this, so you know. <laughs> so I'm going to be running Division One in Super Street, and then I'm going to be doing a few national events in that. Obviously, there isn't many. Charlotte is one of them this year that got added, so we're planning on going there. Um, and I'm going to be doing possibly some in Tori's car that she can't get into in Super Comp. But I had mentioned earlier, I don't really, I like Supercomp, but I like Super Street better. Supercomp, I feel like I'm in like a rocket ship. And by the time I open my eyes, it ended. And <laughs> I don't like that feeling. I like the truck where I feel like I could eat a donut in the middle of the run and still be good. So, and I, the, everybody says it'll get slower, but it hasn't gotten slower. At Maple Grove, every round I kept winning at the national event, I was like, it's going to be over soon. This is like so much focus needed for this dang car. But that's the plan as of right now. You're doing better than me because I'm still waiting for Super Street to get slower and it's not. <laughs> well, you're going faster than me. Yeah, I, I hopefully will be going pretty fast this year. I got a new motor going in it. So oh, cool. We'll see. We'll just end the misery sooner. <laughs> if you actually look in Pete's car, he has everything to make a um, sandwich and you know drive down the track he's got the but he's got a peanut butter knife and everything and i just froze i put put an extra alternator in there for the toaster oven so i could yep. toast bread or something on the way down yeah <laughs> um i have to uh not take any of the spotlight off of you taylor uh but i gotta ask about aunt jackie uh because she absolutely killed it this year in top dragster so what uh what are her plans for this year do you know she is going to be testing at the end of January, beginning of February at um, Bradington. Um, there was some rule changes in alcohol dragster this year for the A fuel cars. They have to run their fuel a little. Am I echoing? Am I echoing? I so. Do you have a phone on or something? That... I have. I have. No, I don't know. No, I don't know. It just came out of nowhere. I know all my volumes are down there. It, it could be on my end because somehow my screen is frozen. And oh, yeah, look at you. You're all frozen. My car's yeah. still frozen. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm sorry. So rule changes in alcohol, and she's going to be testing. Yeah, so she's going to be testing. It went away now. She's going to yeah. be testing. Um, they, I think it was a 10-degree fuel different change to hotter now for the A-fuel cars. So they're going to have to test, figure out how that's going to work. I mean... It's a definite big change. And then there are full steam ahead running every race. I feel like that there that's is. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Good. And uh, last but not least, your husband. Uh, I heard rumors that he'll be racing Super Comp this year. Yes. Um, he going to do the tour with you and beat up on your sister? What, uh, what are the plans as far as that goes? <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely some smack talk going on already, but more between my sister and to Vincent instead of Vincent to my sister. But his plan is to run Super Comp at basically every Division One race as long as the car is ready to go and run some national events and maybe like one bracket race. He, he just wants to try it out, but he wants to mainly focus on Super Comp because that's where my family is and now his family's my family and we could sure. all integrate in super comp. And like he said, why would I want to go bracket racing when my family is in all yeah. one spot? Yeah, absolutely. 
And how about your dad? Am I right in saying that that he played around some last year? Yeah. So my dad used to run uh, bracket races all the time. And when I, I actually were, remember that I used to do that with him way back. Then. Yeah, he used to do really well, actually, at ACO. But when we started getting heavily involved in junior racing, he said that it was just way too much. And he had way more fun being with us than sure. racing himself. So he stopped racing. The truck was supposed to be his, but that went really well, as you can tell. <laughs> um, and then the dragster was supposed to be his and Tori took that. Yep. So we're not, I guess we're not the nicest of children to him, but he ran a top eight race at Cecil County last year and ended up winning um, the last race of the year. And he went to the quarterfinals of the JEG Sports Nationals in Columbus. Yep. So he's done well. He's only been out like four times, but he always seems to be going rounds. Like riding a bicycle, right? Yeah. Good for him. Excellent. So, uh, Billy, do we have any new events uh, I know before we went on the air, you were talking about how the Dutch got moved. Uh, any new things? Uh, the MPK car is going to be back there this year. Uh, anything new and exciting coming up? Well, as of now, the schedule hasn't been released. Uh, oh, so okay. when the schedule comes out, uh, I'll be posting it on my Facebook page. Uh, if anyone's listening out there, if you want to follow me on my page, uh, send me a friend request and I'll accept it. Um, PDRA will be back this year, uh, the Dutch being moved to the end of October, which is going to be another big draw. Uh, the highlight of this season is the 60th anniversary of Maple Grove, uh, which opened in 62. Uh, the Nationals will be back along with PDRA. And also one of the big additions, and I think it's one of the most welcome additions, is the return of the bracket finals to Maple Grove because it's basically – for many, many years in D1, Maple Grove was the home of the bracket finals. Very cool. Yeah, you know, when, when I used to bracket race, uh, back when I started racing, I actually had a little sticker made up for my dashboard that said Maple Grove, because all I wanted to do was qualify for the bracket finals, because that's always where it was. Uh, so I remember that back when they probably started the races with a flag instead of a light, but uh, yeah, it's. I remember Maple Grove being known for the bracket finals as a bracket racer, without a doubt. Very cool. So, Billy, I need you to do me a favor. For the people that don't know, what are your duties at the track? Because it seems like you are the utility guy and you are everywhere doing everything. Well, basically how I started is I originally started in time slips and then I eventually worked my way up to tech during my first season. And then eventually that led to staging and I learned to do uh, staging that those first three, uh, that first year. Then eventually um, I worked those positions going back and forth. And then when my one mentor got really sick, uh, Mark Carey, who's no longer with us, um, I filled in filled in for him for a couple of years. And then uh, at the end of this season, I uh, got the opportunity to learn the, the CompuLink system, which I really looked forward to and uh, really liked doing. And then in between there, um, I also filled in and announced from time to time. But basically, if with all the positions that I work, if they need me to add a position, they just put me there and I do it. Awesome. And according to your nomination for 30 under 30, you do it pretty damn well, too. Yes, I do. Even though there were times where people make mistakes, I take the mistakes and I learn from them. Absolutely. Listen, we all make mistakes. Look at Chris. He wasn't even on time for his own show tonight. <laughs> and he's drinking on the set. You do have no, a drink. I'm drinking on the job. Yeah. <laughs> so. Taylor, I'm going to put her on the spot a little bit. Taylor had this cool special effect where, like, if she held up her arms or something, you could see her truck in the background. I'll do it again. Yeah, oh, would you? I mean, it's so cool. I want to do this. Look, wait, wait. 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 Okay, of course now it's not going to work. <laughs> I saw a little bit of it. All right, wait, here, here it is. Go. Here it is. Here it is. Look at that. There we go. Is that look? And she's looking around it. See if you can put your face where the window is, like you're driving. It's green. She's green screening. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't, it's it's all messed up. That it's is not the like coolest yours. thing ever. I'm like, you know you got it together when you can move your arms and we can see your truck. That That's is just cool. from school. 
<laughs> all online classes. Oh, that is so cool. So, Chris, what do you got for our guests? As I probably already bored them entirely too much. Well, I got to hope that my computer of all times to die doesn't decide to die again now. You're good now. Um, we got no echo or anything, so I think we're good. I think we're good, hopefully. Um, Taylor had a, a little bit of a special event happen in her life a couple months ago. So uh, I, I, I meant to say congratulations then, but I didn't. So, you know, two, two months later, congratulations, Mrs. Nobile. Thank you. So uh, how, how's the first couple months of married life treating you? No different than the past couple years of dating? No, it's no different. Other than I have a ring on my finger. I was going to say, it's not much different than just that, right? We're no. all there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Billy, you're the sole survivor, kid. Keep it going. Yeah. yeah. Keep, keep, the, keep the dream alive for us, Billy. Make us proud, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, you were just talking about how Vincent is a meat freak. And Taylor spilled water on the stove the other day, so that was that was very informative. That was pre pre show. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now you said you're going to run a couple national events, Taylor. You're going to run obviously all of Division One, and then kind of as the season goes on, see what happens. Now, what um, are your plans in line with what Vincent's going to run as well? Yeah, so we're going to base our schedule off of the same same thing. So what he races, I'll race. He has enough room in um, his new trailer to fit my car. Well, my dad's car, I guess I should say. And my dad gave us permission to take it wherever we want. So if he goes somewhere that my dad doesn't want to go, I'll just throw the truck in the trailer and head out. Very nice. That's awesome. That's very cool. Like I said, you know, Congratulations to, to you guys and uh, destination weddings are awesome. It was, I couldn't, I'm not a wedding person. I've never dreamed of my wedding day. I'm not like a typical girl. Um, and I wanted no parts of a big wedding. So when we were talking, I think we were actually in Charlotte and Jackie was like, what about if we just all go away and like, just take our family? And we loved the idea and we ran with it and we had, 40 something, I think it was like 30 something actually, 30 something people in our family and they were all racers basically, but like four people and we had a blast. Where uh, where was it Taylor? San Juan, Puerto Rico. Very nice, very nice. And, and Uncle Sean went online to ICanPerformWeddings.com and got, got ordained, right? Yeah, so I wanted to make the ceremony like special and not just like a typical cookie cutter thing. And I called him because he's like my second dad. So I couldn't have thought of anybody better to do it. And I said, do you want to be our ordained minister? And he was like, I'll, I'll take it. I love it. And he did an awesome job. He prepared for like weeks to do this. He had a binder and he made it so awesome. He made it way more emotional than it would have been for any other person standing up there doing it. That's awesome. That's, that's very, very cool. I said congratulations to the to the both of you. So, so I got uh, questions for both of you. Go ahead, Pete. As a racer, I think every racer in the world, I don't care if you race twice a year or the first full schedule, you always set goals for yourself, right? So I'm going to start with Billy uh, because even though you don't physically race, you definitely strike me as the kind of person that has a goal for yourself uh, year in, year out. What would your goal be for the 2022 racing season at Maple Grove? One of my, well, every year when I set out uh, to begin the season, my main goal, and it's been that way since day one, is just try to get better and better every year. Um, you know, doing the same jobs, you get into a rhythm of how the job is performed. And after a while, it becomes clockwork. And each year, I strive to get better, to get better, to get better. Well, I got to tell you, I don't think there'd be too many people that would say you're not getting better every year. Uh, just in the comment section alone, a couple of people are, I'm sorry, comment section alone. Uh, you've got people calling you a rock star uh, and saying that you're very good at what you do. So keep on doing what you do, my friend, because you're doing a hell of a job. So 
now, obviously, you know, I have to direct the same question to you, Taylor. And God help you if you say one of those goals is beating me, we're going to have an issue. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do Where it. do you see Taylor at the end of year 2022? Well, I think aside from any just person running Division One, other than trying to win the championship or be a Jags All-Star or whatever those big goals are, is just to, I feel like, when we're racing, we're so focused on winning and getting that next win light or uh, where we're going to go next. But I want to focus more this year on enjoying the time that I have at each race and to enjoy the people that are around me at each race because life could change really quickly. And I feel like as I'm getting older, even though I'm not that old, I'm only 23, but as I'm getting older, I I notice like how much more things mean. It's not just a race at Virginia. It's I get to be with my family. Not everybody gets to be with their family every weekend. So I guess just enjoying more little moments and stop rushing the big picture of like wind lights and getting to the next race. So I, I've got to tell you that obviously, you know, I've watched you for a couple of years. I've competed against you for a couple of years. And a lot of people say that, um, oh yeah, you know, she, she gets the sponsors cause she's young, cause she's a girl. I call, has anyone swore on the show yet this year? Chris? No, we're just getting warmed up. Okay. I call bullshit to that. You are a representative for the people that sponsor you. Uh, you're an ambassador for the sport. And that's a pretty big label to put on someone that's 23 years old. But everything that you do, you represent very well. Um, I know that when we race together, I'm proud to be in the same category as you. Uh, you do a lot for the sport, uh, just like Billy does. And um, anything that you have, you earn and you represent well. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, just the answer, right? If someone asked me an, that question right now, I would say, I want to win a championship and I want to win a national event, right? Listen, I love spending time with my family. I couldn't do this without my wife and kids. Um, I always tell other people, to take a breath and enjoy what you're doing and, and kind of, you know, don't, don't let it go by. Don't make it seem like it's an everyday thing. Uh, but I never say that about myself. So uh, just the fact that at a very young 23 years old, uh, you have a good enough head on your shoulders to, to know what's going on and appreciate that stuff. It, it just speaks volumes for how you were raised and what you're doing. You're doing a hell of a job. Thanks. I feel like that's such a big part where, and I've heard it too, like you get sponsors because you're a girl or you get sponsors because you're young. But the thing is, sponsors don't care about your age. They care about how you're representing at the racetrack. They care about your social media. They care. They, you don't really see my face when you think of sponsors. You're just like, when I'm out there, you're just thinking of what I'm representing and they don't care what you look like. I mean, yet, it might help to be a girl. I don't know. I've never been a boy, so I don't know if that helps. But <laughs> I feel like it's just making those relationships, going out and saying hi to them, talking to people that might never be a sponsor to you one day, but you just make a relationship with them and know that maybe one day it could turn into something. I yep. think that's such a big part of racing, too. Absolutely. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> I have to laugh because Aunt Jackie is shedding tears. <laughs> 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 which is listen and again you know i talk about how you were raised obviously your aunt uh is a big part of that along with your parents and and sean um you know, i i see it because you know i teach in school now and you could tell the kids that are doing more than just going home and playing video games or you know a kids where both parents are paying attention um you could just see it, you know, after a while you get a feel for it, you could see it. And there is no one that wouldn't see it with you in your situation. And you don't take it for granted, right? We, we've seen people in the sport that have everything handed to them on a silver platter and they don't represent the way you do. Um, so, you know, in my opinion, you've earned everything that you got and you're doing a hell of a job. So, and, and Billy, that goes for you too. I mean, obviously I don't know you, uh, because I haven't watched you race like I have Taylor. Um, but you don't strike me as the type of person that's ever had anything handed to you. 
Uh, you've earned all that you have and all that you do. Uh, and uh, listen, that's the reason why I'm saying what Drag Illustrated discovered and, and you know, brought to light. That there's a reason why you were nominated for what you were. So hell of a job for both of you. For Billy, I'll add something too. We were at Maple Grove divisional and it rained and as you know the first one we sat in rain for days and we took a group trip to go bowling and billy was working again at the bowling alley so he doesn't <laughs> he's a very hard worker and so it doesn't just deserves, stop at the track huh <laughs> yeah and deserves all the credit that he gets that's cool. and that's in awesome. and in fact when i when you post that uh, photo of us all together um, unfortunately, the event got postponed, but I commented saying how I hoped everyone in our group would be in victory lane. And a few months later, I was happy to say uh, you and uh, your aunt both got into uh, the winner's circle. Yeah, maybe you should comment on all my pictures that that would be great. Maybe <laughs> that was a good sign. Either that or I'm going to have to start getting into some of those group photos or something. We got to and you're going to have to change the crowd you hang out with, Pete. That was what I'm starting yeah, to Yeah, you're not kidding. <laughs> Got to hang around Uncle Sean. I Uncle think what Sean, I have to do is try and stay awake after eight o'clock at night would probably help. I go to sleep. I go to sleep at eight. So that's not true. Good, good. Say, that's, right. That'd be a stretch for you, Pete. 8 15, 8 30. When we're still, when, when Jerron is still talking up a storm, or Pete's over Jerron there and he's got waking up and starting to work. Yeah. That's, yeah. He's, that's he's got his face in his hand. His eyes are getting heavy. And, uh, you know. good stuff. Me, well, I'm a I, night out. I'm a night out. I don't go to bed till like two, three o'clock in the morning. I get even with not going to school last week, four thirty in the morning. I'm, I'm up, in the shower five five thirty, and that's, then I sitting on the couch at eight o'clock, and I'm, doing the head nod. If you ever time. see me at the racetrack, I'm never out for the nightlife. I'm always asleep since I was a little kid. I'm in bed by like nine. I wouldn't know because I'm in there with you. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pete and Taylor, they must be sleeping. <laughs> yeah, it must be not. It must be eight fifteen. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so, definitely. I I'd like to second everything that Pete said. I mean, with you, especially with you, Taylor, because I obviously I, same deal. I know you much better than I than I know Billy, and you know, it doesn't matter how young or how old you are. It's how you represent, and it's how you work for it you know i mean i was i texted pete the other day my son's 18 years old just graduated from high school he just got a job making really good money learning how to work on heavy equipment and he didn't get it handed to him he earned that on his on his own i i had nothing to do with it his mom his friends nothing it was you know him going in chasing what he wanted and he walked out the door with it. And, you know, it's the same thing for you, Taylor. Well, a funny story to what you were kind of just saying. So my first start to division racing, I would go around with Jackie and John Fink and watch them and Sean. And when my dad got the truck, he said, I don't know if we can do the whole seven race deal and travel because he works, he has his own business. So he has to be there. And he said, so if you want to race, you have to pay for your entry fees at least. So that was at 18. He told me I had to pay for my entry fees. And I'm thinking, geez, I don't have this kind of money to go spend on this racing stuff. So he said, well, either do it or figure out how to do it. So that's how Josh and I actually met at Bernie's, who my Bernie's sponsor is. He was at a lobster bake with at New England. And I was telling him about what I do, what I want to do in my life. And he was like, well, what if I sponsored you? And I said, that would be awesome. And since then, I think it's going on five years now that we've had a relationship together. And it all started with my parents basically telling me, if you want to do this, go figure it out. Right. Which I appreciate. I didn't like it at the time because I was like, great, how am I going to do this? I'm going to be sitting on the sideline. But it made me try to achieve something and set a goal for it where they could have just said, let's go racing and we'll pay for it all. Right, right, right. Here, here, here's a check. Let's go. Right. Yeah. You yeah. know, when when you're when you present yourself well um, and you show ambition and desire, uh, <clears throat> most of the time, all you have to do is strike up a conversation 
and people will see how into it you are uh, and, and they'll be willing to invest in you. Um, and, you know, like I've already said, like five times tonight, there's no shortage of your personality, how you present yourself and how you represent. So uh, and when, another thing I say that's crazy is every sponsorship I've had, I've had only one of them has come from me sending in a proposal. The rest are all just conversations. So it's not like they were talking about PRI and how PRI isn't the place to send in your business card or your uh, resume and stuff. And sure. it's really not none. Sponsors don't want to be given a request. They want to build a relationship and then let them decide if they want to sponsor you or not. Not you asking them, yep. which I've noticed that. And that's a big thing that I think people don't really realize. It's not about just asking for the money and saying, I'll put your sticker on the car. It's about making a relationship first and then them coming to you. There, there isn't a single person, obviously I'm going to be very general here, but there isn't a single person that owns a race car that doesn't want a sponsorship unless you are have so much money it's like coming out of your eyeballs but i don't think any of us here are in that situation um they all know that you want sponsorship so at that point you kind of have to do something to stand out uh you know be a little different set yourself apart from the other 600 people that you race with week in and week out they all know you want it if you could get them to approach you that's probably going to be a lot more meaningful relationship uh, as far as years to come and money spent, uh, then you soliciting 24 seven and driving people crazy that probably don't really want to talk to you in the first place. So, um, Taylor, who else do you have for sponsors? So I have Bernie speed shop, which I just mentioned, that's my biggest sponsor going. I yep. just picked up right trailers this year as well. Um, VP lubricants and race fuels, race pack, uh, accelerated travel, just, for the my whole life that's like don't life, say. <laughs> that's like a life thing she, she's my sponsor for life and um i think that's moroso always helps me out whenever i need scott hall's awesome and yep. i think that's about it uh, now i've noticed I, I hate like hell to mention this on the air but a quick latch i saw on your car are you are they still with you no, they're not with me anymore. With COVID, they got hit really hard. So we decided to step back from them. But Rob is awesome. Their products, I still have them on the truck. And okay. I would love to work with them in the future. But we just took a step back because, as you know, COVID hit everybody differently. And Excellent. So what I am going to do is I am going to hit you up at the first race that I see you at because I have them on my car and I love them but I'm having trouble getting them to work perfectly. Okay. So maybe I could check out your setup. Yeah. And, and my dad, my dad is very good friends with Rob and can call him, text him. And we have some extra quick latches. And obviously my whole back bed is quick latch. So you could look at it and my dad could better awesome. explain. Good, good stuff. Dynamite. And Billy, does, uh, does Maple Grove have any new sponsors coming on for the year for advertising? Um, as of now, um, I do not know, but in the event that we do have new sponsorship coming on, um, we're always looking for sponsors. So if you're listening out there and you want to sponsor, get a hold of Betsy and Sarah at the Maple Grove office and let them know that you want to sponsor. We're always looking for sponsors at Maple Grove and always looking for new opportunities to create new opportunities at the Fast Track to Fun. Excellent. Now, Billy, I got a question for you. Your your trivia thing that you do. How long have you been doing that? Well, that actually started as kind of like a thing to do during the uh, off season, but really that started uh, when COVID hit. Um, as everyone knows, COVID shut everything down, and with everyone stuck in their houses, I figured to try something to keep people occupied, uh, so then no, no one's going like stir crazy as everybody was, including myself. So that's how it started, and it just grew from there. I now, think, how about the, the die-cast racing? That was another thing that started. Uh, we are doing that uh, every Monday night. Um, that also started during, as an off-season thing. Um, everyone's familiar with Monday night uh, football, so I figured why not do something called Monday Night Nitro and basically have a bunch of die-cast cards that I've collected over the years. 
and I have a little drag strip diorama that I have on my dresser. And it's basically just, I pick uh, what, two random uh, die cast each week. And then uh, we just have like a best two out of three match race. Um, usually when the Super Bowl uh, takes place, I do a Super Bowl of drag racing. Uh, I'll be doing that this year. And I tried it at first last year just to see how it went. And then it just like the drag racing, uh, the racing trivia, it just got a good uh, following. And I said, you know what, I'm going to bring it back. Uh, basically, it's something to keep the races occupied and give them something to look at during the long off season, especially here in the Northeast, when, as everyone knows, uh, the Northeast has been pummeled with snow the last few weeks. So when you're sn snowed in, uh, why not do something about racing? I, I think I can happily say that you guys that live south of me, which is all three of you, have got more snow than we did in New Hampshire. So you can keep it down there, please. We're supposed to be 10 degrees in New York tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be cold, cold here. So we, uh, I That's heard beat, rumbling. Yeah. I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard that Sunday we could have a massive storm. Uh, they're not really uh, locking it down just yet, but they're talking like measured in feet, not inches. Pete, come on. They don't lock it down till the minute it falls and then they see like an inch. Then they say there's an inch on the ground. <laughs> yeah. the, last, the last one we got on Friday was supposed to be four to six. It was a foot. How do you how are you off that much? That would be the equivalent of us going out and running an 1150. How, how could you be off that much? <laughs> <laughs> not that i've never run 1150 before but people, i don't get paid people, for it <laughs> people that have real jobs if they were that far off they'd be fired oh my god i mean listen i don't want to pretend to know what it's like to predict the weather yes yeah, same good god it's painful it's i only predict the weather when i look outside when i look outside and see what the weather is that's what the weather is for me when you take the tape measure i predict we got yep eight inches that's what we got <laughs> i'll tell you for sure the day after yeah, that's the best. Back. That's the best forecast going. No doubt, no doubt. So, Billy, I want you to know that I think I participated in your trivia about seventy-five to eighty times, and I think I've won twice. So my record is kind of kind of like drag racing. <laughs> I'm very consistent. <laughs> Billy, I like when you make us share memories because it's really cool to go through and read everybody's memory that they have. I appreciate that, Taylor. And in fact, uh, it was an honor being, speaking to memories, it was an honor being there for Jackie and your uh, first uh, national event wins happening uh, at the same track, Maple Grove, just different years apart. Yeah, we were just talking about that. So Vincent has two national event wins at Maple Grove. Uh, I have one and Jackie has one and both Jackie and I were our first ever. So it's kind of cool that we're all definitely a Maple Grove kind of group. Yeah, that's very cool. And <laughs> having Billy hand me my time slip at the end of winning the national event made the national event win way better. Oh, you know what, Billy, since we got you on, I got to ask you a question. The gentleman, and actually Taylor probably knows this too, but the gentleman at the end of the track that waves you off, I love that guy. Yep, right? that is Bill, that's Bill Buchanan. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's been there forever. Am I right in saying that? Yep, yeah, he's been doing top end for over 20 years. Uh, when he's, he's the only person when NHRA comes to town, uh, it's very rare that NHRA has their own person from each track uh almost every uh, national event has somebody at the top end but it's very rare for the host track to have their own top end director at the end of the track and bill's another passionate guy um he really loves the racers he cares about them um his binoculars we call him uh eagle eyes bill because he can see things from up on the starting line all the way down where uh he's at and yep. uh he cares about all the racers. He loves all the racers. And uh, Maple Grove is very fortunate. And the entire Northeast is very happy to have him at the top end. Yeah, he's, he's such a, I mean, just something as simple as getting waved off the track. It's like, I want to get out and shake the guy's hand. He's like, <laughs> so, you know, he gives you a thumbs up and he waves. And it's like, it's just, it's like, why doesn't every track have that? 
when I won the national event at Maple Grove, I was already crying, obviously, in my helmet for winning. But he is always very nice to my family. My grandfather uh, has been at Maple Grove for like thousands of years, basically. So Maple Grove knows him well, so that in turn, they know me and the rest of my family. And having him wave me off the track, too, it just made me cry even more because he's such a good guy. Maple Grove is very lucky to have the few of my favorite staff members in all of NHRA and all of racing, Billy being my top. But don't tell anybody, Billy. (laughs) I won't, Taylor. Your secret's safe with me. In fact, uh, 27 viewers that we have right now. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. When when Taylor won the Nationals, um, they should have had somebody down at the time slip booth uh, with me and Bull. Uh, We were both balling uh, as we did when Jackie won uh, back in 16. Cool stuff. A lot of family memories at that place, that's for sure. That's cool. So, Chris, you got anything else for our very special guest? I think we covered it. I mean, Taylor is is our new frequent flyer on on Racers News Network. I I think she likes us, or she probably it's more so you, Pete. She well, likes I, you. I was afraid I was going to get hate mail if I didn't show up tonight. So he ditched <laughs> us the last time. <laughs> I actually I didn't feel good. Last, I was supposed to be on last week for two in a row. And I didn't feel good last week. And the only thing I thought of is I have to rest up and get better. Because if I'm not on this week, Taylor's going to hate me. <laughs> That's the first. And he's not kidding that. Taylor, that is literally the first thing he said to me when I told him I was oh, having yeah. both of you on. He, he, he messages me back. He's like, I got to make sure I'm on or she's going to kill me. She'll kill me if I don't. <laughs> yeah. I might have I might have told him that he stunk because he didn't come on the last time I was on. Sure, I think it was sure, Pete. You show up the week after I'm on if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think that was the exact word. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Um, Taylor, we're also going to put you on the spot again. Uh, are you going to be at Lebanon Valley for the divisional this year? Yes. Okay. Uh, Chris, we are going to do another live at the Valley, correct? Yeah, we're going to have uh, junior drags, dragsters on um, this year. Excellent. Oh. Excellent. Um, I am going to suggest that somehow we get Taylor involved. Um, I'm pointing this way because that's where you are on my screen. I'm not sure where you are for everybody else. Actually, I'm looking. You're <laughs> down on the live. Um, seeing as how she came out of junior dragsters, did you ever race junior? Uh, I'm old. Eight to be, 17. You, you could contribute a hell of a lot more than I can. Uh, so if you wanted to ask some questions while I throw stuff at you, um, that would be awesome. Yeah, perfect. Maybe me and Vincent could sit next to each other and make fun of you while you're live. That'd be great. Yeah, that, he would love that. Anything that involves making fun of me, he's definitely. <laughs> I'll bring my I'll bring my little my little airsoft gun, and you can. There you yeah, go. good idea. You can, little, you can shoot the little plastic pellets at her or something. That's, that's a good idea. I need to get that for this house. I need to start shooting Vincent with Nerf guns and stuff throughout the whole day. When I, I, I know there's, there's a certain kid. Him a couple times. I was going to say, there's a certain kid that lives at the other end of this house that has damn near every Nerf gun ever manufactured, I think. He's got one of the ones that has the drum on it. And I think it's like 60 to 100 right. rounds on it. Well, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like a Gatlin gun for yeah. freaking Nerf darts. Uh, that's awesome. I Good fell asleep stuff. on the couch one time. I woke up to be pummeled with Nerf darts out of that thing. So, Chris, oh. I read, and I think I know what one of them is, but I read that you had some breaking news to share with us tonight. Yes, I'm interestingly enough when you know we're having this little chat about you know sponsors and stuff um last year as everybody knows we did the guess the number of entries and in the division one lucas oil drag racing series events you know closest one to what the actual number is wins a custom-made t-shirt by uh, mama t's custom creations and just some random stuff out of the Racers News Network prize box. Um, Jags was nice enough to join us um, last year. 
and add to the pot with hats and t-shirts and stuff. Um, they have come back and are gonna be part of that again. We're still gonna do the custom t-shirt for each event um, made by my wife. And we're gonna do um, random JEGS stuff from the prize box. Um, so they're back with us. Now, talking about our live event that we're doing at Lebanon Valley, when we had Wayne on a month or so ago, I asked him, I said, hey, so what do you think? Can we do this again? He's like, absolutely, not a, not a problem at all. So I just kind of started bouncing it around inside my head and I put it out to Facebook universe and uh, Tina Olszewski came up with the idea of, let's have, why don't you have the juniors on? Get, get five, six of the, the junior kids on and maybe even a couple of people who have made, recently made the transition, Taylor, um, from juniors to, you know, full-size cars, be it door cars, dragsters, you know, whatever. Um, so we're going to have now Taylor. Carol Bell is going to be on with us. She went, came from juniors. And there's a possibility that Jasmine Weeder might be joining us because she made the transition uh, two years ago, three years ago from um, juniors to uh, a super comp dragster. And that event, I just got the uh, notice the other day that it's gonna be sponsored by Lucas Oil. So I wanna say thank you to Lucas Oil. I sent it out about a month or so ago. And uh, Jan actually January 7th, I got the um, confirmation from Lucas Oil. So they're gonna yeah, be- that's when you sent it to me. Yep, part of our um, live show at the Valley. So awesome. that's pretty cool. Good that's stuff. Awesome. And that's Taylor awesome. Uh, Taylor just mentioned that uh, she has another sponsor she would like to mention. Uh, I, new I can't, for 2022 or someone that's been with you? No, the same. And if I forgot this, I wouldn't be able to sleep for like a week. But <laughs> C2 Competition Converters and Machining, uh, my uncle Lee and my cousin Chase, they do an awesome job with my converters and my motors. And they're actually like my biggest sponsor. So the fact that I forgot that is a horrible thing. Listen, and you could just say that you saved the best for last. Don't worry. Yeah, about exactly. It. They get their own special <laughs> announcement. So if you want to go check them out, they just got a new website. I'm not sure if it's up and running yet, but they're ready to take anybody's converters and anything you need, call them. Thanks. Taylor, what I'd like for you to do for us, if you can, is when we're done, put a post on Racing News Network. Okay. Tag, tag all your sponsors. Let's give them some airtime. Perfect. Thank uh, you. So that anyone that wants to check out any of the people that you mentioned, uh, they could click on it and then look through stuff and see what they have. Perfect. Support. I always say support the companies that support racers. Absolutely. And then Absolutely. Billy, when, uh, when the schedule comes out for Maple Grove, uh, please feel free to post it on our page also. Uh, so Absolutely. All our, all our viewers can get first crack at taking a look at it. Absolutely. And by any chance, if your aunt is still listening? Oh, she's listening for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a nice new 2022 planner right here. No, no pressure, Jackie. No pressure, no pressure. at all. <laughs> but you have to come on on a Monday night. Yeah. I, Jackie, suppose you can, I suppose you could have Taylor on. With you know, you actually, you <laughs> just had the greatest idea ever. <laughs> Besides showing up on time for my own show, <laughs> get you we need get your aunt on. We'll schedule her on, and you can host it and do the interview. Oh, that would actually be cool. She would actually wow. feel a lot wow. better doing that because she gets really nervous on interviews. So she would like that. Jackie says, "I, I she's think we can make time. that happen." Yeah, we would. We would both enjoy that. Jackie's my best friend, so anytime we get to be on something together, I'm in. And she actually just said, I'm in anytime. Perfect. So let me, um, I'll get the schedule for when, when the season starts. Is, yeah. is she planning on going to California for, for to Pomona? That's always their, like, you never know. But everything else, yes, they're in for. Pomona is always their question mark because it's, it's, I don't know. I don't like that track. It's really scary for an alcohol car to run there. So I would prefer she didn't go. Is she doing Gainesville? Yes. Excellent. Regional and divisional for sure. Nice. Or nice. Regional and nice. national. So maybe 
maybe a couple of weeks before Gainesville. So we could kind of do like a kickoff Gainesville show. Yeah, uh, cool. She could tell us like what she's doing, what the rest of her year looks like, uh, stuff like that. That'd be cool. She's way uh, more interesting than me. Just so you know, we have a Vincent request too. Oh, uh, getting yeah. him to no. do something. Yeah, you have a better Janet. chance of Billy being on it with him. <laughs> uh, Janet Swinsome. Swinsome. Yeah. She said wait, Ad Vincent. Yeah. So, oh, wait a minute. And Jason Kittenplan also said Ad Vincent. Vincent. And Greg Barsamian did as well. One thing that you would not really think, because, I mean, he ran Pro Suck all of his life. He's very good with fans and with people. He can hold conversations great, but he doesn't like doing anything like social media, this kind of thing. He likes to, like, sit in the corner and be by himself. But I can try. Okay. <laughs> if you bring Billy on again, he'll probably come on. He loves Billy. Absolutely. Uh, and also, um, when Jackie comes on, uh, feel free to bring Sean on too, because he's also a D1 killer. So uh, I know Jackie just said that you should interview both of them. So the only okay. request I have is I want to see Jackie and Sean on separate screens. Perfect. And then we'll so have would like that. Of- Sean would like that better in a separate room away from Jackie. Because <laughs> hey, well, it being yeah. in the same room and they could yell at each other while they're on screen, right? <laughs> Taylor, let Vincent know if he ever wants to come on the show. I'll uh, join him as well as a uh, guest come host. On. All right, I'll tell him. Well, there have, we go. You could interview your aunt and uncle, and Billy can interview Vincent. Perfect. Chris and I will just sit back and eat popcorn. And, yeah, fun. we'll just sit back and go. <laughs> And you know, the cool thing is, Pete, I just thought of to come this summer is that now that I have my little my little scooter thing, yep. cruise around the racetrack on, well, we could chase down Vincent. Oh, there you go. Now, I'll get him going this way. You get him going that way. We'll box him in somewhere and just stick the stick. Oh, I got to tell you, Vincent on foot is probably faster than you and I on scooters and bicycles Vincent's well, really fast actually <laughs> he could jump really really well I I asked I remember I asked you that when you won just... the when you won the national event if he if he was a uh, a track athlete because he must have got about four and a half feet in the air yes there he is yep <laughs> that's hey his left foot is almost over the jersey barrier that's pretty impressive it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> These are the best moments of winning a race. Yep. I Our still have, when, when I won the divisional at ATCO, uh, I had a friend of mine all the way back against the wall videoing it. And my wife and James Sr. was in front of them. And when they saw the wind light come on, their reaction, and then my kids and everything, and my wife hates it when I post it because every woman thinks they look terrible all the time. You know how that goes. Uh, but that video, uh, listen, if I never win another race, I could watch that video over and over again. And I know exactly what you're talking about when you say that, because somehow I have all of my wins that I've ever won on video from somebody and I'll just be sitting like downstairs and I'll just start watching them because those are the moments that make your win. Absolutely special. incredible. Yep. I have two killer winner circle pictures. And I've got that video. And you know what? If I never win another round for the rest of my career, I'm grateful to have those. They're incredible. All right. Let me just jump in. Vincent said uh, to Billy, that's a deal. Oh. Billy. Right. See, I told so you. Bill, you're, Bill, I couldn't yeah, even right. get I'm his yeah. wife and couldn't even get him on. I, I got, we have the greatest plan ever concocted on this goofy show of ours right now. You're going to interview your aunt and your uncle. Billy's going to interview Vincent. How about that? Perfect. Perfect. That, Perfect. I like it. I like it. I'm in. I'm there. And Rob Keister said that you got to keep gummy bears away from Sean. <laughs> <laughs> do we even do we even dare ask Taylor? I don't know. No. <laughs> Judging by Taylor's reaction, I'm going to say no. We're going to leave that alone. We used to have, just a short inversion, we used to have a Zoom cocktail party during COVID with like 15 of us. And it literally was from, I think like 
six o'clock till midnight and all of the adults, I mean, I was an adult at the time, but I don't drink. So they would get so drunk and Tori had gummy bears and that's the end of that story. <laughs> okay. I, could, I think we could figure it out from there, yeah. But were they, were they Har Harboro? How do you yes. say it? Yes. Those are, as far as I'm concerned, those are the only gummy bears made. Those are the only ones Tori eats. That's right. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, guys, I got to tell you, this is my first show of the year, and it was fantastic. It's going to be hard to top this one throughout the year. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. You guys are rock stars. Uh, good luck to both of you this season, uh, except for when you race me, Taylor, obviously. I still want you to have good luck. I just want mine to be a little better. Um, and, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing more of you guys in 2022. Can't wait. Absolutely. Thanks for having Absolutely. us. Thank you for having us. You're very welcome. And, Taylor, I'll be in touch with you with dates. Perfect. Billy, if you if you really want to do that, my man, you can have it. It's your, we, we have oh, no hell problem. Yes. Hell yes. Yeah. All right. Good Same stuff. thing. I'll send you guys. I'll send dates. I'll look at the calendar because I assume you guys are going to be racing in Florida as well, Taylor. Um, we're not a hundred percent sure on that, but we're hoping. Vincent's scrambling to get this car ready, and my dad will not drive to Florida. That is way too far for him. So I need my husband to drive us, or we're not going. Right. <laughs> well, you'll be hearing from me by the end of the week. Sounds good. All right, cool. Well, Billy. Taylor, guys, congratulations. It was a bummer that you're not going to be able to celebrate the Division One banquet, but we kind of made up for it a little bit in this goofiness that is Racers News Network Live. So congratulations on your marriage. Congratulations on your selection, Billy. Congratulations on your selection. Keep up the trivia. Keep up the die cast racing, my man. You guys are you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure Thanks, being guys. on. We'll see you soon. All right, guys, have a great night. Thank you. So did you have fun tonight, Christopher? I did. I was only a few minutes late, so it wasn't that bad. Piece of cake. Yeah. No so uh, obviously a lot, a lot of great stuff, you know, but the uh, the banquet has been postponed, as everybody knows, due to yeah. COVID craziness. Kind of nice that they didn't outright cancel it, though. Right. They le it's left open to a to be determined, pretty right. much. Right, which is good. That, yeah. you know, again, it shows signs that they're trying. Yeah. Um, no doubt. No doubt about that. Uh, one thing that I do want to touch on real quick Um you know how I get pissed off when people talk about NHRA racing and how it's dying and all the stupidity and negative stuff that they say. Speak, uh, my son. Did you see what it took to get into Gainesville? Grade eight. <laughs> I think the only class that went to grade seven was Super Comp, and they only had five spots left yep. uh, after all the eights were in. I mean, ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous numbers. I heard, I don't know how true it is or not, but I heard that stock filled up in under an hour. I, I've i heard some people say it took seven to eight minutes for it to oh. fill. So some people have said that. Some people said, oh, it was an hour or two. I mean, so whatever. I mean, I, I have a lot of time on my hands, but I don't have the time to sit there in front of the computer and watch that. Right, right. Um. So, but it's, still, um, I mean, I wish, let me, uh, let me look real quick and see if I can. It, it's funny because, oh, so Robert Keister saying it filled up in six minutes. Six minutes. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Now, it's funny because I was talking with Gerard earlier in the week. Uh, well, I should say late last week. And. It's interesting how categories fill up depending on what part of the country that you're in. Um, right. I know that he was saying that like super stock here filled up uh, very quick. I think stock was quicker, but super stock still filled up very quick. In Pomona, they had um, like half the field isn't even filled yet. 
per stock and super stock, but the dot 90 stuff filled up really quick. So it, it's weird how, depending on where you are in the country, what, what classes are more popular than others. Right. You know, and it's, it's weird too, because like there was just the stuff a couple of weeks ago, uh, maybe three weeks ago about auto club uh, dragway has been shut down. Yep. You know, people are, you know, now saying, okay, how long until California falls off the face of the planet? Because there's only, what, three, two or three tracks left in the well, entire Pomona state of California? and Sonoma. Sonoma. And I'm sure there's probably a couple other ones that I don't know of, but. All right, let's, let's do some comparing. First event of the year is Pomona, February 17th through the 20th. Obviously, the pro cars were not even going to factor that. Yeah, in. right, right, right. Well, let's actually let I take that back. Let's start with pro stock, since uh, there's zero quota, obviously, for pro stock top alcohol dragster, top alcohol funny car comp. There's three pro stockers entered so far: one top alcohol dragster, one top alcohol funny car, <clears throat> excuse me, and one comp eliminator car. Super stock. On a quota of 70, and again, this is the Winter Nationals, mind you. Right. A quota of 70 for Superstock, they have 45, so it's 64.3%. Stock Eliminator, same quota, 62 entries for 88.6%. Uh, Super Cup is full at 100%, 70 right. for 70. Yep. Super Gas. Uh, 70 quota, 60 entries, 85 point, 80, yeah, 85.7%. Uh, top dragster, 36 is the number uh, with nine entries. To, uh, excuse me, top sportsman, 36 is the quota, nine entries. Yep. Top dragster, same quota, 30 entries. Okay. Now we'll skip over Arizona, now, which is the week. Keep, keep one ahead. thing in mind. Pomona has been open considerably longer than Gainesville. Yep. Got to be at least two or three weeks longer. might even be longer than that. Considerably longer. And stock and super stock aren't even full. And stock and super stock in Gainesville, which is obviously the other end of the country, filled up immediately. So it's, it's like I said, it's the demographic and, and how it changes. It, it's it's kind of weird to see because you would think a popular class would be popular throughout the whole country, not just on one side of the country or one section of the country. I remember a few years ago, there was a debate on, I think it was on classracer.com. People were trying to figure out where the largest percentage of stock and super stock cars are. Yep. And it's mid-Atlantic, according to what they've said. I don't have any actual proof, but I would tend to believe it. Mid-Atlantic East Coast has the largest percentage of stock and super stock cars. Really? That's what I remember. Re I remember reading that. Um, all right. So first event of the year, we're going to go to the third event of the year, March 10th through the 13th, the Emily Oil uh, Gator Nationals. We'll skip over the entire, from. we're gonna skip over from top field dragster down to comp. We'll just start with super stock. On a quota of 60, there's 61 entries, 101.7%. Stock eliminator, same quota, 64 entries, 106.7%. Super comp, 60 and 61 entries at 101.7. Super gas, 60, 62 entries, 103.3%. Uh, top sportsman, 36 <laughs> is the number, um, five entries, 13.9%. Top dragster. There's going to be uh, a lot more. Make no mistake about that. Oh yeah, that's that, that will tracks, that will either fill or be, be right close right close to full. Right. 
in a, a just like the pros. Of... Same thing with the pros. I don't know what they're showing for numbers at Gainesville. I guarantee you they won't have any shortage of, of pro cards at Gainesville. No, no, they won't have any issue with that. There's the only thing that's showing is just three pro stock cars. Right. Right and now. We, we um, know that that's not going to happen. Right. So again, top leave ending with top dragster and a quota of 36 there's 19 so 52.8 percent so that'll be either full or right damn near full right the when it closes yep. which is the monday prior to the event if i remember correctly right that is correct yep okay so an event total for gainesville is 312 right now they're at 277 so there are there are literally a stone throw away, and when the pros decide to actually sign up, then they're going to be there. Correct. Backing up to the Winter Nationals, an event total, three hundred and fifty-two. Uh, currently, it's at two hundred and eighty-two cars. Yeah, because that's the the pro cars don't factor into that. I don't believe. I actually think they do. Let me hold on here. Let me see. Seventy, one forty, two ten, two eighty. Let me see. No, they don't. Uh, if you go by event total, yep. From stock, uh, excuse me, from super stock down to top dragster. That is the number 352. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. Well, that's good to know that when you're when you're looking at those numbers, that you're looking at strictly sportsman numbers. Right. You're not there's no pro cars. I mean, maybe there is eventually factored in there right. in some way, right, right. something, but according to this, it's that is where the number is created. Oh, cool. Good to know. So excellent. Yep. So just for just for the hell of it, let's look at Arizona. Uh, again, we'll 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 the only two pro pro classes that are excuse me, there's three pro classes: top field dragster, top field funny car, pro stock. Um, and then it's stock on a quota of sixty. There's thirty. Super stock quota of 60. No, wait a minute. I screwed that up. Sorry. Quota of 60 for super stock. There's 30. Stock, same quota. There's 50 entered. Super comp, 60 and it's full. Super gas, 60 and it's at 57. Super street, 60 and it's at 16. Wow. Top, top sportsman, 36 and it's at 7. Top dragster, 36 and it's at 23. Hmm. Interesting. So, I guess everyone wants to race in Florida. Who the hell wouldn't? It? Yeah, I, I, live there. I was going to say, I know I do. <laughs> Especially if we get 40 inches of snow, like I was just looking at some people talking about, I'm out of here. I don't even want to think about it. I'm going to come down. I'll, we'll jump in the RV and we're out of here, Pete. And with 40 inches of snow, how am I going to get it out of here? We'll have to back up, <laughs> back up, put it in drive and floor it. Let it eat. <laughs> <laughs> Let it eat, yeah. Uh, um, would like to say one last thing to uh, about a gentleman that I have known a large portion of my life. Um, Steve Broadbent, unfortunately, passed away this past week yeah. um, due to COVID. Um, related issues. Um, I've known Bob since I was about eight years old. He's worked for my family and my family's garages basically my entire life until they sold them all and he went on his own and opened um, Seacoast Automotive. So obviously with knowing Bob, I got to know Steve, not, not as well, but got to know Steve and I'm, you know, very, very sad to read and hear about um, Steve Broadbent passing away. 
He also raced, um, he raced Azra, the All-Star Racing Association. He did some NHRA divisional stuff. Um, his son, Randy, also raced um, for a while. I'm not sure if he's racing anymore or not. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've known all, some of the broadbands damn near my entire life. And uh, I was very sad to hear about Steve passing away last yeah. week. It's, uh, it's been a tough year so far. Um... I know that uh, Rob's dot ninety series lost uh, a very good friend and competitor, um, and I have to apologize because I do not know the gentleman's name. I never personally met him. Uh, that would be Bill Phillips. Bill Phillips. Okay. Um, I know he drove an absolutely beautiful Corvette in Super Gas. Um, Super Gas? Or did he do Super Comp with that car? Uh, as far I as like I know, with with the uh vet he was just in super gas he had the uh camaro looked right. like an iroc it That's was an correct. iroc yeah, body yeah. style gen or whatever yeah fourth gen. Yeah. yeah um i think he just ran super street with that right 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 so yeah I, again you know passed uh fairly suddenly it's uh 2022 starting out tough uh you know hopefully we can put all this behind us but uh those are two people that will really be missed in the drag race community absolutely it said I've, I've known um i've known the broadband name for uh, like I said basically for all intents and purposes Forever. my entire life yep and uh was very sad to hear about steve so he was a really cool guy um obviously him and his brother bob you know been racing since the dawn of time yeah, right. And then maybe even to another 20 years beyond that. Yep. So. Yep. No doubt. Yeah, it's, you know, everybody says it's a joke. It really isn't. I mean, it's brought the whole thing to light for me a little bit more. I mean, yep. you were you were not feeling well. Another no. another mutual friend of ours was not feeling well. Had some issues with it. Yeah. Um, it's a tough one. I mean, I'm not going to say it's the sickest I've ever been, but it, uh, you know, it, it threw me for a little bit of a loop and it's, it's even still, I'm still, <coughs> I'm still not over it completely. Uh, but it's, it's real. It's, it's real and it's scary. Um, you know, like we just gotta keep fighting and try and take care of ourselves as best we could and, uh, keep on going. Right. Yeah. Well, it's like, I, the reason I, like I was late tonight because I work at a, at a local um, high-end private school. Yep. Kids from all over the world come to the school. Um, they all had, all of them and the staff had to be tested. I transported 651 COVID samples today. Oh. To a lab down by M down at MIT to be tested. So wow. that uh, kind of a little bit yeah. to it as well. So. But my friend, continue to stay safe. It's been a yep. pleasure doing the first show of the year with you. Absolutely. And many more to come. Yeah, we've got a lot of great stuff coming up. Um, you know, obviously tonight, Taylor Nobile and Billy Kleinspin. Um, you know, I was that was a that was an awesome interview. It really was there. Taylor Taylor's a lot of fun, and I've I've never spoken to or even seen Billy in any form of in person but Same. uh it's a good kid hey so. you know what it, it's i've never you know see him at the track and wave uh, a couple of comments back and forth on facebook but talking to him tonight it's like i've been talking to him for the last 10 years uh absolutely. very easy person to talk to an interview he was a pleasure absolutely it was so next week i think it might be me and geron i'm not sure it depends on his schedule okay. um got a lot of a lot of stuff kind of cruising in the, the beginning of the year to, to get everybody warmed up and keep the, keep the juices flowing, so to speak. Um, Angie Smith's going to be joining us next week, Pro Stock Motorcycle Racer. Yep. So she's going to be on. So looking forward to that. And then uh, the 24th is going to be Division One standout uh, Kelly Barbado. Excellent. Uh, races Super Street, Super Gas, as well as her dad races Super Gas. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And on the 31st, it's going to be 
Uh, Rolly Miller from NMCA and NMRA. And then uh, Nick Kissack, who's uh, an Olympic hopeful and also races dragsters in uh, Louisiana, going to be on with us. February 14th, it's Valentine's Day. We've, all, we've decided that we all want to sit on the couch, eat chocolate, and get even fatter than we already are. I don't know if that's possible. No. I'm speaking for me, obviously, not for you. <laughs> so we're going to take off the 14th of February, but we'll be back the 21st with a guest we had on a few months ago, Carly Wolf, who won her first event um, in Mid-Atlantic.90. Crap, I just dropped my tag. Um, but I have another. I saw She's going to be on the list. I saw her at PRI and I felt like such a jerk because I didn't recognize her. And she's like, Pete, how are you? And I'm like, hey, how are you? And I'm like, I'm trying to do one of those you doing? glance at the name badge type thing. You know, I'm like, you don't recognize me, do you? I'm like, I'm so sorry, I don't. She's like, it's Carly Wolf. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. How are you? I'm so bad with recognizing people. And it, it you know, I have an issue with, do I know you from racing? Do I know you from my shop? Do I know you from school? Do you know, it's like it's and then when you see someone in Indiana, you don't know where the hell you know them from. You know, it's just it's one of those things. I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Rob said, don't worry, Pete, you do that to me. Rob who? Easter. Oh, OK. Yeah, <laughs> I think I've heard of him. <laughs> but um, no, I, I contacted Carly. Um, <laughs> Few weeks ago and said hey uh, she wrote this really cool thing on her instagram about the next generation of racers yep a little bit of mini article um and i thought it was really cool and i thought it would speak to a lot of people so i said hey would you be willing to come on and talk about it she said absolutely i would Excellent. so she's going to be on with us february 21st so like i said we've got a lot of cool stuff coming up and the season hasn't even started i like it i like it so Hopefully next week I won't be late. I, I know it. a lot of people miss me with every shot fired. <laughs> so. uh, good stuff. But, uh, oh, hey, has anything gone for a swim yet, Pete? No, nothing yet. I got finished with um, the last project that I did. And I got to be honest with you, well, right after I got finished, then I got sick. Um, and I need a break from that friggin' dunk tank, man. If I never see <laughs> a gallon of water again, holy Christ, that was a big project. But we'll get back in it soon. I got to do uh, a helmet for Jimmy Stack and then uh, your stuff. So we'll get back into it. I got till March. I'm good. There you go. I'll hook you up. Cool. All right. All right um, actually, oh, hold that thought for just one second. I know it's nap time for you. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> You're cutting into my soap operas, you know. Um, from Rob Keister, he's gonna have news in a few weeks um on the Dave Stein Memorial, some more Dave Stein Memorial stuff. Excellent. So we'll be talking to that means we'll be talking to Rob in a few weeks too. I like it. So I like looking it. forward to it. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is how we do that. That's right. Chris, it's been a pleasure. Looking forward to another good year. Absolutely. And uh, we'll see you soon. We'll talk to you. All right, pal. Take care, guys. All right, everybody. Have a great night. Stay safe. Let's do the no snow dance. Keep it uh, keep it keep anywhere but like anywhere here. but here. <laughs> uh, draw an imaginary line from like New York all the way down to Florida. It could go anywhere west of there. Right. Nowhere where there's drag racing. Yep. <laughs> Have a great night, everybody. Pete, all I'll right. talk to you soon, pal. All right, bye. All right, guys, again, stay safe. Have a great night. Wash your hands.